Some guy gave us a negative comment on one of the videos because he could hear wind. Yeah, and uh, because it wasn't, because uh, it was rock metal instead of, <laughs> yeah. like, uh, Almond Brothers Look at all that something. wind in the background. <laughs> Here's one head with the, with the fueling endurance springs installed, and here is the other head with the screaming eagle springs installed. As you can see, this is the broken the broken spring right there. Okay. Ouch. The one nice thing about these the Milwaukee Eight compared to the some of the other models is because the springs are a little bit lighter and the valves are smaller. If you do have a spring break, more often than not, it is not a catastrophic failure for the inside of the engine, which is nice. Most of the time, people think that they have like an exhaust rattle or their floorboard is rattling because it's intermittent and it sounds odd, but once you have heard it a few times, you kind of get to know what it is that you're listening to and you can kind of zero in. And it's usually the rear head that'll go first, although we have had, we've done a rear head under warranty, replaced the Screaming Eagle Springs in that one, and then like 400 miles later, a spring broke in the front head. So now whenever we do a warranty spring replacement, we just do all eight of them. And whenever we're setting up even our spring, Screaming Eagle heads for our performance builds, we don't use the Screaming Eagle Springs anymore. We always recommend going to the Fueling Endurance Behalf Springs. There's two different models. Uh, these are the set that the 1107s, they use the stock retainers. And there's another, there's another set, the Ultra Premiums, that use the titanium fueling retainers to add even, to give it even more um, rigidity and lighten the weight even more. Compared to the Screaming Eagles. I don't know where here it is. Yeah. It's about to be our next one. So there's just so many things you can do with these fueling springs you can't do with the screaming needles. For one, the height is the height. Here's your spring, here's your seat, and this is the valve seal all in one. Whereas with the fueling, you have your seats and there's also shims. So you can actually do the math to see how much of an opening you're going to have so you can maintain your maximum spring pressure all the way through the travel of the valve and set up your shims accordingly so that it's customized to the load. Now we do that as part of our setup if we do the in-house Screaming Eagle heads or our stock heads with higher lid valves that, replace, that require heavy duty spring replacement. And there's some also some other really cool facts about these fueling springs that you should see right about here. So now I'm going to pull out all these valves and we're going to go through step by step how to remove the valves and the springs and the keepers. I always lap, the, anytime I remove a valve from its home, I like to lap the valve back in to make sure that it's got a good seal against the seat inside the head. And we're going to do show you some of the little tricks and tips that I've used over the, over the years. And let's just get this rolling. Oh no, the tape's melting. You gotta hurry up and get it fixed before you get pissed because they can't be covered by watching the internet. Another thing that's very important is when the valves ride inside the guides, they kind of wear their own pattern. So you want to make sure you don't mix the valves up when you take them out and reuse them. So what I always do is I set them up, especially with these four valve heads, I do one head at a time and then I set them up as if the head is facing forward. So on the right is the right and on the left is the left. And then, you know, if you don't, just don't mix up the exhaust and the intake valves, this is not a good idea. It won't work, but I've seen people try. Oh, damn it, it happened again. Oh, wait. 
One more thing, I think right, maybe right there, right there. Okay, you guys can, okay, good. And zip. So the last thing I like to do, I like to just give them a little tap. Kind of like a little tap, tap, tap. tap. Like a little shock, make sure everything is in place. And that's pretty much it. Valves are installed on both heads. Ready to rock and roll. We got another one. Cannot believe that. I think that's like three now. So I'm ready to shoot. I just got my hair cut. We should do a video about how to avoid that problem. We just did. Seriously? Yeah. Look, they're done. They're installed. Power waits for no man.